Hello! Today we are going to review the Regal Company DG1000 Series Arbitrary Waveform Generator. This product line features models with a maximum output frequency of 30 and 60 MHz, which are respectively the DG1032Z and the DG1062Z that we have right here. All new products from Regal have common design elements, and the DG1000Z models are no exception. The basic design elements look similar to those of other products. The front panel houses the LCD, the power button, the USB storage port, the operation buttons, the first and second output channels, and the frequency meter input terminal that is conveniently designed as a separate input terminal. Other waveform generators usually have a frequency meter combined with channel 2. The rear panel holds synchronization terminals, external modulation inputs for channels 1 and 2, the reference signal input-output terminal, the LAN terminal that supports LXI technology, the USB port for connecting to a PC, and the power input terminal. This device uses a static power supply unit. Therefore, the input voltage can be from 100 to 200 volts. We also have the grounding connector here. The generator has standard dimensions for this type of device. All the angles are capped with protective covers made of rubber, which allow standing the generator up on a surface. Now we are going to introduce you to the basic functions of the DG1000Z series generator. Let's turn the generator on. The cooling fan automatically turns on to circulate cool air inside the device. Now the generator is on. Let's create a signal through one of the output channels. It'll be the first channel. Using the channel 1, channel 2 switch, we can switch between the first and second channel. The first channel is active. In this example, I'm sending a sinusoidal signal to the first channel output with a frequency of 100 kHz. Here we have the first channel output terminal. Nothing so far. I'm pressing the output button and we have a signal. Here we can see the sinusoidal signal with a frequency of 100 kHz. The firmware of the generator provides many different signal forms. Let's have a look at the basic ones. We have sinusoidal, meander, triangle, impulse, noise, and some other available signal forms. Let's pick a random one. For example, the one like this. Now let's get back to the sinusoidal form. Also, there are several modulation types. Pressing the mod button here, you can see the different modulation types. Amplitude modulation, phase modulation, and others. For an example, let's select amplitude modulation. Here you can see just that, amplitude modulation. The device also has a sweep function that sets frequency wobbling. It turns on instantly. Here we have a sweep time of 3 seconds. The starting frequency is 100 Hz, and the ultimate frequency is 5 kHz. We see here it's working. There is also an impulse mode. Now we will switch to the preset cycles mode. In every impulse set, the signal has 4 cycles. As you can see, there are four cycles on the display. You can also change the number of cycles. Here is the Utilities menu. This menu allows you to fine-tune the generator. You can set the synchronization method, turn the frequency meter on, etc. After that is the Store button. Using the menu here, you can set the device to save or read recorded oscilloscope charts. 
It can write to USB storage, read from USB storage, etc. And it has an inbuilt help menu where you can scroll through all of the generator's functions and get acquainted in detail with all of them. As the generator has two channels, let's take a look at how it works in two-channel mode. What I like most about it is that the two channels of this generator are absolutely identical. They are equal. Sometimes you can find devices where one of the channels underperforms in frequency, is inferior in amplitude, or has certain modulation limitations. But this device has none of those drawbacks. Both channels are identical and support all of its functions. I'll make a sinusoidal signal of maximum frequency at both output channels. For this device, the maximum signal frequency is 60 MHz. Channel 1 is set to the 60 MHz frequency. I'm switching to channel 2 and setting the frequency to 60 MHz as well. The device says that the maximum frequency for the meander signal is 25 MHz. Therefore, I'm switching to sinusoidal and setting the frequency back to 60 MHz. Then, I'll turn on the second output channel. By turning on the auto mode, we can see the two sinusoidal signals with a frequency of 60 MHz. Let's drop the frequency of both channels to 1 kHz. The display shows that the signals have a small phase shift. We can change the phase shift as this device provides a phase shift function. Now there is almost no phase shift. The signals concur almost completely. Because we have two channels available, both can be supplied with two harmonic signals. For example, I can show the Lisaju curve. After switching the device to the X and Y mode, here we can see the curve. Due to the phase shift between the signals being equal to zero, we are seeing a line instead of a circle. If we change the phase, we will obtain a circle-shaped signal, like that. Because the frequencies match, the figure remains stable so that we can set a small frequency difference to make the figure rotate. The figure is rotating. Due to the equal frequency, the figure is circle-shaped. If you change the correlation between the signal frequencies, the figure will change too. For example, let's set the first channel to a frequency of 1 kHz and the second channel to 3 kHz. As you can see, the figure has changed. Let's also change the frequency of the first channel. The figure is frozen because the ratio between the frequencies is divisible, 2 to 3. If we set a small difference of 2.1 kHz, the figures will start moving again. This was a brief video review and demonstration of the basic capabilities of a Regal DG-1000Z series generator. Be sure to check out our other videos and subscribe to our channel. We wish you all the best. Goodbye!